Welcome back to the Classic. This is Comic Corner Classic. That's known classic. This is episode number 1390 and Depot Shot number 1284. I have two DC trades, one of whom is a finale. You're probably thinking, which one's a finale? This first one. And it's Robin, son of Batman, volume 2, Dawn of the Demons. This collects issue 713 of the Robin, son of Batman, ongoing series. Yep, this is the end. Yep, he basically deals with, like, what one of the main plot threads in here is that he deals with the villain he met at the start of the series. He met, he basically, you have Dogman, I think his, uh, Dugman, I think his name is. And he battles, he battles him, his son, he works, still works alongside nobody's daughter, who halfway through the story stops wearing her outfit, and wears, like, a simple dress, like a sundress. And... Also, Demon gets reunited with his smoking hot mom, Talia Al Ghul, which he doesn't call mother. Nope, he does not call her by that. He just calls her, oh, hi, Talia. Yep, probably because of the, they don't have a good relationship. He has a good relationship with his father, perfectly fine. Yeah, Batman's in here for the last few issues, which kudos. My only guess is the reason why he made a guest appearance in his own son's title was because he was back. Because what happened, Batman 50. And the final two issues take place after the events of Batman 50, which is great. Now, yes, you have Goliath here on the cover, and shows off, and of course shows off in the issues basically of how much Damien is an animal lover. Where he has Bat Cow, Alfred the Cat, yes, a cat named Alfred, named after Al Pennyworth, and Titus, one of his dogs. Yes, there's actually two dogs that Batman owns. There's Titus, and there's Ace the Bat Hound. Yep. But I gotta say. And of course, at one point, they actually have where Damien, nobody's daughter, Maya, and Dagwa just go off on their own, have a little adventure. While basically, Damien's parents are fighting with Dagwa's father, arguing with him. And then Batman's like, Can you come on, please? Where? And of course, I was like, Where did you go, Damien? And of course, they fly off, and that's where the series ends. I gotta say, this actually is a pretty good series. Now, I should point out the first issue has nothing to do with that. It's a tie into Robin War. Yep, and it's also Patrick Gleason's last issue he does for this series because starting issue 8, we have Ray Fox taking over the series. Yep, Ray Fox does the remaining 5 issues of the series. Now, Patrick Gleason is still, still has some of the artwork in here with Scott McDaniel and Roman Bacchus. Now, the cover up mostly is done by Patrick Gleason. Mick Gray, who was one of the inkers, and John Klett, who's the colorist in here. Which, I love the guy's artwork. And, this book is just really good. I, I, I gotta enjoy this. actually is a really good ending to the series. I give this book roughly a... I give it a 9.5 out of 10. Now, why did I think the series ended? Because Damien was going to Teen Titans. That's really the only reason I can think of. Was because Teen Titans came out not long after this. I was almost immediately after the series ended. We had him join Teen Titans. Yeah, and by the way, when this the final issue came out for this, it was almost 10 years exactly since Damien's debut back in 2006. And now, of course, Damien also got a new costume. I saw Perry in this series. He eventually got a team-up series with John Kent, a.k.a. Superboy, which my friend Tibby and I love this series, the Super Sun series, which started as a backdoor pilot, which basically got back to the pilot page of Superman by Tomasi, who later got, they got our own team-up series, which, of course, is fantastic. Ended up to 16 issues due to Bendis. Yes, the DC have no idea what his plans were. And eventually we got the Adventure Super Sun series, which, of course, was really good. I like it, too. And my friend TV loves it as well. And I think, like, the last thing I did with Super Sons was, of course, Challenge of Super Sons, which I haven't finished reading yet. The, the Super Sons title was involved with one crossover. Yes, one crossover, the Super Sons of Tomorrow, which is a great crossover. The crossover itself is a follow-up to Lonely Place of Living, a story arc in the pages of Detective Comics. And this is a crossover entirely done by Tomasi. Yes, Tomasi this whole thing. He nearly wrote the Superman issue and Super Sons, which is not unexpected. But he also wrote the Teen Titans issue is basically part of this stuff. Yep, that was all him. And, and of course, we know about D Damien's time in Teen Titans, where basically he was not written very well. 
and the fact that the writer of the original artist basically slid into the series, John Boy Myers, left after the rebirth issue, and he didn't go into detail, but he did agree with my theory of exactly what was the reason for him to stop appearing after the, after the rebirth issue, because it disagreements with Ben Percy. Yeah, that was definitely true. He had disagreements. What the disagreements were, I have no idea. I didn't want to delve into exactly why he left, but... That did pretty much verify exactly why he left, but I did tell him, despite the fact he left, the artwork did not suffer. Because normally when artists like, like him leave a book, uh, the artwork would suffer. But he didn't have problems, as far as I can tell, he didn't have a major reaction to me telling him that the artwork didn't suffer. It really didn't. The, te the artwork with Teen Titans for the entire 48, 47 issue run was actually pretty damn good. Yeah, that was one thing that I can say was definitely positive about the Teen Titans run. Of course, Damien saw appearing in Teen Titans and Super Sons, Avengers Super Sons, and Challenge Super Sons in the last five years. He has also appeared in guest star spots, mostly in the pages of Superman, Detective Comics. He took, played some roles in not only Super Sons Tomorrow, but also the the Lord's Office Contract, which is a really good crossover. The Terrorist Agenda, which was not that good. Per se, it wasn't as good as Live Contract. My only guess is the reason why they did it was because Live Contract was so good. There was also, he played a minor role in Dark Knight's Metal, which was amazing. He played also, I think he played a small role in Dark Knight's Death Metal, mostly in tie-ins. Excuse me, aside appearing, also he also made guest appearance in Detective Comics. Mainly because Tomasi was writing the book at the time. I think he appeared for like a couple story arcs in prayer as a guest star. And... Well, then, of course, you had Gap being Robin in just last year due to very stupid ideas. Yeah, the reason why he gave being Robin and why he was acting out of character was because Alpha Pennyworth died. Yep, and now currently he's got an ongoing series, a brand new one. First time in five years. Yeah, at the time, basically, they just released the first issue last month. It had been five years in the end of this series that he got himself an ongoing series again. And got a new writer, Joshua Emerson. Okay, that's actually a good choice. I, I don't mind him, basically, as a writer. I read the first issue, I'm like, yeah, that's actually pretty good. I actually like it. I, I thought the first issue was actually really good. As in the case of the supporting character series, Mai herself didn't do very much after the series ended. Nope, she popped up for the Super Sun Spectre pilot in Superman, popped up in Bizarro World, which was actually Tomasi's last story arc. And she also appeared in, like, one issue of the Terrifics, and that's pretty much been it for the character. Yeah, she has done virtually very little over the course of the past five years. Abar thinking, really? She appeared in roughly six comics in five years. My only guess is because DC didn't have any plans, no, no DC writing any plans for the character. He's like, Tomasi had an idea what to do with her, but did anybody else? Nope. Nobody did. And the way that the series was written, it seemed like though Maya, despite like at first, didn't like the, Now, when the series starts, she wanted to kill Danny because she, he killed her father back in the first story of Batman and Robin, though it wasn't self-defense. Eventually, she started to like him. And there was a hint that these two had a crush on each other. And when the series ended, it seems like nobody wanted to fall with this at all. Nobody. Also, interesting little factor when it comes to Damian Wayne. Currently, um, when uh, five years ago, he had just turned 13 when the Ben Percy run started for Teen Titans. At the start of the current volume for Robin, even though it's been five years, he is now currently 14 years old. Yes, Damian Wayne is 14. So, are you saying the past four, like five years have been a period of one year? It's possible due to how the comics work. Alright. Moving on to the Rebirth Era. Start of a new run. Now, technically, I read the first trade for this series. Uh, for the previous volume. But not this volume. I haven't read anything for this one. And this is a volume when I was reading originally. Uh, when it was coming out from 28, 2016 about 2018. Actually, about 2017 when it ended. It was very confusing, and I thought it was one of the two most weakest titles under the DC Rubric banner. Now, everybody knows my thoughts on Brian Hitch's Justice League, but you do not know about my thoughts, uh, my, my friends know about my, about my thoughts on this particular run, but I've never actually detailed talk about this particular book before on this particular channel. 
we have Cyborg by John Stampa. John Stampa Jr. Which, from what I heard, this is one of the guys behind Spider-Man the Animated Series. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. One from the 90s, which is really fantastic. This book contains the first five issues of Cyborg and the Reverse Special. Interesting little thing when it comes to this particular book. Now, like a lot of DC book publishers point, this is published twice a month. And then for some strange reason, I have no idea why in the world DC did this for, after the completion of this very story arc, after the first five issues, they reduced to once a month. Yes, I had no idea why in the world this was, just that it happened. Now, I have don't know where I can find the second trade that collected issues from the previous one for this series. Because initially, that previous one was done by David Walker. But he left after the first, like, seven, eight issues. And then Marv Wolfman, one of Cyborg's co-creators, had to finish the book. And initially, uh, Marv Wolfman, despite that rumor happening, he was initially asked to be the writer book from issue 12 for... Excuse me, jump on early. Now, here's the interesting thing I should point out about this book. Now, if you read the previous volume, Cyborg had a completely different look in that volume. It had this basically very slaveless and this blue look. Here he's back to the Jason Fabok look for like no reason. I'm kind of like, really? <sighs> yeah, this was something that I particularly didn't really like very much. It's kind of like what what, what Marv was doing with with Sam Wilson making Falcon again, maybe this back was Captain America for a few years, or making Laura being Wolverine. Yeah, going backwards in a look basically is a step backwards, in my opinion, of somewhat of character development. I personally don't have a really big problem with the Jason Fabok look. It's fine. But I'm like, what was wrong with the look that was introduced during, during David Walker's run? Answer me that. That's a really good question. Also, apparently, this book couldn't keep our artists on for more than this shoe or two. Yes, because in just a lot of the rebirth of this shoe, you have Paul Palitier, Will Conrad, Timothy Green II, Alan Jefferson, and Derek Donovan. Now, up until the last issue, the artwork is actually not that bad. Mostly, anyways. Like, here's the artwork from the Rebirth special. This is my Paul Palitier. This actually is pretty good artwork. I like this artwork. It's actually really, really good. Now, from what I can tell, he does do the first issue, which is basically like Imitation of Life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does the first issue. Also, we have Cyborg versus Kilgore, who I think is an old J. I think he's an old JLI villain. He only his computer. Yep. Now, still consistent artwork. Paul Pelier is basically the artist for the for, for the rebirth issue, the first two issues, but there's going to be a change. Oh yes, there's going to be a change. For issue three, it's Will Conrad. Okay, not bad artwork. I don't have a problem with this artwork at all. Yeah, though I should point out though issue three is mostly like a flashback to uh, just like origin. Also, for some reason, we have despite the fact everybody who appears in all their books basically wear the current outfits. For some reason, as part of a hallucination in one one part of the story, we have Superman wearing the Jim Lee outfit. You know, with the collar, and I'm not really sure exactly why he was wearing this. Yes, as far as I know, there has been no explained reason for this at all. And then for issue four, you have Timothy Green take over the artwork, which, okay, not bad artist. I do not have a problem with this artist at all. I'm kind of like, okay, then what was wrong with the original artist, Paul Pelier? Why did he stop after the first few issues? Yeah, this artwork is fine. Not really much an issue here. Well, that is until you get to the final issue of this trade. Issue 5, done by Alan Jefferson Derek Donovan. Which, the first artist, I don't know if this is, De this is Derek Donovan, Alan Johnson. I'm not, re re Alan Jefferson or Derek, I'm not sure who it is. This artwork for the first part of the shoe is not terrible per se. It's pretty decent for what it is. But then, like, halfway through the issue, like. Yeah, it's like, okay, halfway through the issue, 
It's like we have to squeeze everybody's faces. Yes, this artwork is terrible. Look, look, look at this. Cyborg's head is squeezed for like no reason. Yes, halfway through this issue, we have an abrupt change of artwork. Let's see, how many pages into this book is a change of artwork? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, after the first twelve pages, like roughly half of the issue, we have an abrupt change of artwork. Let's see, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19. Yes, for the last seven pages of issue five, we have this really, really bad artwork. Now, I'm not sure why DC decided to replace Paul Pulitier, who was, well, I could tell, good artist. And despite changing artwork for issues three and four, not really a problem with the artist. Did have a problem with issue five, but the really abrupt change, like the artwork was so, like, I would say for the first half of the issue, it's basically done in a good style basically that's that's really good first like half the issue and then like halfway through we have to change the artwork for like no reason what's the story here just basically cyborg in detroit working for star labs having his father victor stone basically be a supporting character book which that's what it was the last book as well sarah charles his potential love interest and then, like, half of the story, like, he's suffering through hallucinations. He finds a woman who he later turns into a female cyborg. I'm kind of like, okay. And the main villain of this storyline is a robotic version of, 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 of Silas Stone from the universe. Which, oh boy, this guy. Okay, the, the robot Victor uh, Silas Stone. Let me show what this guy looks like. Yeah, he first appeared, I think, at the end of the first... Uh, I think it was the end of the rebirth issue. I think it was when he when he showed up here. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, this guy here. Here's Robot Silas Stone. Oh boy, this guy. John Stampa loved writing this guy apparently because this guy showed up way too much over the course of his entire run, and the story with him kept dragging. The pacing for his story arc was terrible it was slow very slow probably the reason why dc decided to reduce this from having come out twice a month to once a month because the book wasn't selling too well i'm not i don't know if it was john stampa doing this or his editor doing this now the editor for the annual the actual list here yes Maybe it was due to... It kind of felt as though you read this first story arc. It, it feels as though we have an abrupt change in tone. Though at least the artwork is actually pretty good for the most part. Though, unknown the reason why they had to replace the interior artist in this book. Paul Pelier, uh he does all the covers in here, which I think is really good. I love the guy's artwork. I've never met Paul Pelletier, and I've never met John Sapa Jr. So, you're probably thinking, why would I review this? Because I want to talk about this book. And it is by far, out of all the Rebirth books, this, along with Justice League, were the weakest titles under Rebirth. Of course, Justice League was due to the storytelling, the fact that it was so boring. This one, mostly okay for the first half of this, and then like we have an abrupt change. Oh, let's have a woman be turning into a female cyborg. Yeah, this becomes a recurring plot through this arc. And by the way, when this series ended, it was so abrupt that it was done via a blink and you miss an article that was released online right after issue 23 came out. The artwork is good for the most part. We give this book roughly 8 out of 10, mostly for the artwork. And Victor Stone has written fine. I have no problem with Victor Stone has written or a lot of the other supporting cast. My main problem with this book is the sum of the story here and the villain, the robot Silas Stone. This character is just so boring. And also, while you're reading this, it, we have this very weird style of basically of like we have to have okay, we have this these these um thought boxes, which you'll see us very much lately. Yeah, in the last like I would say twenty years, they kind of been away done away with those. 
Mostly put, it's there. There was a lot of chatting this whole... These issues. Yes, a lot of chatting. Like, so much talking. Yes, I think that's one of the biggest issues with these issues is the fact that these, these issues are very wordy. And that you probably should cut down some of the dialogue here. Yeah. But that's the overall really biggest problem with this book is the writing. Yes, mostly in the form of story. It just felt like moving along the paces. I'm not really sure exactly what John Stamper's original plan was for the book. I mean, when I heard he was initially... This was about five years ago when I was at WonderCon. I watched the online streaming of this. When he was announced as the artist, for the, the writer for this book, I'm like, okay. And they mentioned that he was one of the guys behind the Spider-Man name. And I was like, okay. Interesting. Victor Stone's technically a teenager, though he's like 18, 19-ish. And though yeah, I think he's probably early twenties now. I don't, I definitely think I don't have a problem with him as a writer for this book when basically it was announced. It's just basically when I read the book, I was pretty disappointed. Like, start of this book was perfectly fine. I'd say the sub Kill Gore was perfectly good. I liked the sub Kill Gore. It didn't last too long though. It lasted just the opening few issues, and that was it. Perfectly fine with that. It's the stuff with the robot side of the stone that really dragged the book down for me. That was the overall really biggest problem with this book. And now this is now of all the books they announced for Rebirth, the only two I had a problem with basically who they chose as writers was Teen Titans. Uh, well, that one I had a problem with basically it was mostly just Green Arrow and Justice League. Green Arrow because of what Ben Percy did with the previous issues just prior to the book's relaunch. For Justice League, it was Brian Hitch. I initially had a problem with that because of J because of Justice League America Volume Four. Yes, that book. That was my initial problem with the book. I think a lot of people basically were not particularly too happy. Brian Hitch was chosen as the excuse me, the writer of the book. And I think a lot of people thought though that. DC could do a little bit better. Now, as far as I can tell for John Stampa, he did stay on the writer for a good good chunk of this run. Now, I do plan on reviewing the next two trades, which I have for him right next to me, but that will come later on. But in the case of the next comic corner, it will be two Captain America trades from every biggest run. It'd be quite interesting to talk about this storyline. Yep, so yeah, that's it for the review. So you do my next view, which will be two Captain America trades. Okay, to the next video. Bye.